we are learning how does a contract get enforceable by law what gives the contract enforceability or what are the essential requirements of a contract so we said intention to create legal relationship is required we've done that we've also done lawful consideration and lawful object we have done capacity to contract we have covered free consent and we have also covered agreement not declared as void or illegal now in this part we'll take up the other or the remaining essentials which are required in a contract to make it enforceable by law now what are those remaining or the other essentials it's certainty of meaning possibility of performance and finally necessary legal formalities so let's first take certainty of meaning what do you mean by certainty do you think a contract wherein the terms are not correctly defined would it be valid do you think a contract where the terms have multiple interpretations it is so framed that more than one meaning can be made out of it do you think that would be valid i'll just give you an example you tell your maid that if she does some work for you you will give her 1000 rupees now do you think this contract is valid or another example you tell your maid that if he or she does the household work for you you will give her some money do you think this this contract would be valid i say this contract will not be valid on the ground that there is no certainty in this contract so what do you mean by certainty certainty means the terms should be certain the terms should be definite the terms should be clear the terms should be specific the terms should be specifically made out the purpose should come out clearly the purpose should be certain the terms should be definite and clear they should be specific now in these contracts the examples of which i gave you it is not clear it is not specific as to how much money will i pay or what kind of work is the maid required to do so if i say if i tell my maid or if you tell your maid that you will give her 1000 rupees if she does household work that is cleaning the house and washing your utensils and washing your clothes if if she does all the uh, these three works we'll give her 1000 rupees now this contract becomes specific this contract becomes certain this contract becomes very clear and since it is clear it, it is certain it will become valid however when the terms were in were not laid down specifically the contract would be void so all contracts in which the terms are not specifically spelled out such contracts are void next possibility of performance of an agreement if i tell you i, I am making an offer to you saying if you give me 1 lakh of rupee i'll go to the moon on a bicycle do you think this contract would be valid or if i tell you that if you give me uh, 50000 rupees i'll carry a truck on my hands do you think this contract would be valid or if i tell you um, if you give me uh, 10000 rupees 
I'll write 1000 pages in a minute. Do you think these contracts are valid or these contracts will be void? If these contracts are valid, do you think they can be performed? Can you perform these contracts? Can you go to the moon on a bicycle? Can you write 1000 pages in a minute? Can you carry a truck which is probably weighing hundreds or you know a couple of thousands of kgs on, on your hands? Can you carry it? These things are impossible. These things are humanly impossible. So a contract to construct a building of 10 floors in two days is again humanly impossible. So all such contracts which are impossible in nature which cannot be performed by humans, they are humanly impossible, are considered as void. They can never be valid. So all contracts which are impossible become void. The court will never support you because you have made an impossible contract. That contract is bound to get breached. You will never be able to perform it. Always the result would be that the contract has been breached because it cannot be performed. So the court says in the beginning itself when such a contract is made, it is void. However, there may be a possibility that when the contract was made, it was possible. Later on, the impossibility crept in. I'll again give you the example of, you know, let's say you are in the business of trading in wines. So you entered into a contract to supply wines after a month to me. I gave you the advance. And within a week's time, trading in wine was banned by government in our state. Now please remember, please note that the contract when it was made was valid. It was perfectly possible. However, now since the regulation has come, performing this contract would, would become illegal. So now you cannot perform it. There is an impossibility which has crept in. Now you cannot perform this contract. So the contract started off being valid. Now it has become void. Later on it has become void due to impossibility. Such a contract when the impossibility creeps in becomes void. If the impossibility would not have come in, the contract would have remained valid. But now, since the time impossibility has come in, the contract becomes void. So there are two things in impossibility. The first thing is, impossibility exists at the time when the contract was made. The contract becomes void since the start. Second, impossibility comes in, it creeps in after some time. It was not present when the time was, uh, when the contract was made. So, this, the second contract also becomes void, but when? When the impossibility comes in. It becomes void at a later stage. But please remember, all contracts in which performance is impossible is void. So, possibility of performance is a essential. It is required for the contract to be enforceable by law. The last essential is necessary legal formalities. Now, this I won't say is, is an essential. But this is essential for only specific type of contracts. Because we have learned that the contracts may be oral, may be written. Now, in oral contracts, there are no legal formalities. There is no legality involved as, you know, as to documentation or stamping or signing or registering. However, when the contracts are written, you can sign them, you can pay stamp duty on them, that is, you can stamp them and you can register them. But do you think 
all contracts can be oral all contract can be made in oral words so do you think you can sell your property by oral contracts no the law has made some contracts compulsorily to be in writing like the transfer of property transfer of property has to be in writing you would have seen legal documents of sale of property they are always in writing they need to be signed by the persons and again they need to be stamped and finally they need to be registered by the registrar so these are some legal formalities which are required in the transfer of property again in a gift deed you require legal formalities to be completed a gift deed also needs to be in writing it also needs to be signed it also needs to be stamped it also needs to be registered so some contracts because law has imposed such formalities in such contracts you know following this these legal formalities becomes a prerequisite becomes a requirement so only for these contracts legal formalities being followed becomes a requirement however this is not a requirement for all the contracts so with this we complete our topic on the enforceability by law or i should say requirements of a valid contract